I am resurrection and life, saith the Lord. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though this body be destroyed, yet shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not as a stranger. For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For if we live, we live unto the Lord. And if we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live or therefore die, we are the Lord's. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Even so saith the Spirit, for they rest from their labors.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, whose mercies cannot be numbered, accept our prayers on behalf of thy servant Robert, and grant him an entrance into the land of light and joy, in the fellowship of thy saints, through Jesus Christ thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. This reading is taken from the Lamentations of Jeremiah. <clears throat> and by the way, thank you for everyone being here. For, <clears throat> for my dad. <clears throat> the steadfast love of the Lord, it never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every single morning. <clears throat> Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. And the Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please join me together in reading Psalm verse 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A reading from Paul's first letter to the church in Corinth. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends, but as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. 
When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now, we see in a mirror, dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now, I know only in part. Then, I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now, faith, hope, and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and anyone who comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. This is indeed the will of my Father, that all who see the Son and believe in him may have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Good morning. Uh, my name is Bill Priestley, and we are here today to say farewell to my father, our father, Robert Priestley II. I'm the middle child of three and was described by my father as the challenging one. <laughs> I'm so grateful to say a few words about my dad on behalf of my immediate family today, my brother Bob and his wife Catherine, their daughter Marissa, my wife Marta, 
my children Weston and Amelia, and of course my sister Trisha. My favorite childhood memories of my dad are surrounded by Saturday breakfast at home, watching cartoons, Little League Baseball, and USC football. We did not see much of my dad during the week. We knew he had a very important job. At a very young age, we understood, he, we understood he was trusted and respected in his profession and was admired in our community. I remember his alarm going off at 4 a.m. and him leaving at 5 a.m. for work. He wore large-sized dress shoes and did his best to tiptoe out of the house as not to wake us. My dad loved golf. And after work, as often as he could, he'd sneak in nine holes before dinner. <laughs> From time to time, if I was very lucky, he'd invite me to join him, teach me the etiquette of the game, and constantly saying to me, keep your head down and swing through the ball. <laughs> Every Saturday morning like clockwork, my dad would open the bedroom doors at 6 a.m. He would go to, go to the kitchen and cook us breakfast. And soon we would wake to the delicious smells of bacon and sausage, pancakes, and French toast. It was his gift to us. After breakfast, we would all huddle together to watch cartoons. My dad's favorites were Wile E. Coyote, The Roadrunner, Tom and Jerry, and of course, Underdog. <laughs> then it was off to Little League Baseball, where both my brother and I played. My dad coached and umpired. My mom took score, worked in the snack stand. My sister was unfortunately tasked with putting up with all of this. Soon it was time to return home to watch Trojan football. He taught me the game, and how to be a football fan, which included a lot of cheering, a lot of yelling at the TV, and that tradition continues to this day. <laughs> While watching the game, we would eat dozens of oranges together. He helped me to perfect the art of peeling an orange in one continuous strand. And now that I'm a parent, I look back on his parenting choices with admiration. As an only child, my dad was raised by a working single mom and school teacher. I believe my dad did everything he could to give us what he did not have growing up. He showed us the importance of family, church, community, and the concepts of hard work and dedication and service to others. Certainly, my dad was not perfect, as none of us are. When Weston was born on January 2nd, he and his grandpa began sharing a birthday. During the visit, he pulled me away in private conversation, and he apologized for his shortcomings as a parent, and he told me he had joined AA and was making amends. His journey to sobriety went hand in hand His journey to sobriety went hand in hand with his ever-growing relationship with God. I became a witness to God's grace and how he helped my father on his path to fully loving himself. Another large influence in his healing was Hannah's love and companionship, for which I am forever for which I'm forever grateful. Thank you. In closing, my dad's 
instilled in us kindness, compassion, service to others, faith in oneself, humility, the power of prayer, and of course the love of God. Our commitment is to honor these values and to pass them on to our children as our dad would have wanted. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Sam Davidson. It was my privilege to call Bob Priestley my stepfather for the last 30 years of our lives. By the way, Bill and I are the same age. We went to school together for a few years, and he mercilessly schooled me on the basketball court and at lunchtime often. When I first met Bob, I liked him immediately. Maybe it was because his easy manner uh, dissipated whatever awkwardness might be present when meeting your mother's uh, significant other for the first time. Perhaps it was because I liked his smile, it was honest. Perhaps it was because he sh had a firm handshake and looked me in the eye and, and he seemed genuinely interested in making my acquaintance. But mostly I think that I liked him because I could see that my mother was happy in his presence, really happy. And it was a great gift to our family that that happiness remained and grew and flourished over their whole time together. There are many other things I came to appreciate Bob as he became my mother's BFF and spouse and a well-loved fixture in our family. He was a man of integrity and faith, and, and he really lived that faith, putting his spiritual conviction into actual practice. I really admired that about him. He could also relate to the challenges of being six feet in height in a world where most travel options are designed for smaller proportions. He had some sports junkie in him, as Bill described, and we spent many satisfying hours watching sporting events on TV, wringing our hands over the triumphs, but mostly the shortcomings of the 49ers, the Giants, and the Warriors. And I must say that for a, a truly devout man, <laughs> He could unleash some impressive invective uh, <laughs> when the situation called for it. <clears throat> I also appreciated greatly that um, Bob's manner, his demeanor, he had an understated cool about him. And more than most, men I've met in my life, he had many reasons 
to think highly of himself. Yet, he was one of the most modest people I've, I've ever met. He kept an Oscar statuette, like a real one, earned by his father on the mantle in their home. But he never talked about it unless prompted. He had a fine voice, and he played the trumpet well enough to perform in the Rose Bowl parade, but he never talked about it, any of these things. He faithfully made an exceptional dinner salad every evening, and he never asked for help in doing it. He traveled to many places around the world, many of them with my mother over the course of his life, and he had had many adventures some of which were part of his military service. But he would only talk about them if asked. And yet he always made you feel as if, or me, at least me, that my life was more interesting than his own. When I think of Bob Priestley, who represented the gold standard in being a devoted husband and a supportive stepfather and grandfather. I'm reminded of the words of Edward Kennedy in his eulogy for his brother Robert. Love is not an easy feeling to put into words nor is loyalty or trust or joy. But Bob was all of these, a good and decent man who gave us strength in time of trouble, wisdom in time of uncertainty, and sharing in time of happiness. He was a steady and faithful source of the kind of love that is affection and respect and order and encouragement and support, and because real love is something unselfish and involves sacrifice and giving, our family could not help but profit from it. And Priestley was uh, a truly fine man, and he is much missed. And it was my great joy and privilege to uh, have him be a staunch person in my life for many years. As we are gathered here today to remember our beloved Bob, these words from the great Sufi mystic Rumi resonated with me. Goodbyes are only for those who love with their eyes, because for those who love with heart and soul is no such thing as separation. Bob loved with heart and soul. With all of his heart and soul, he loved Hannah, he loved their children, he loved his friends, and he loved his many communities. And his love remains, continues, and endures. In our readings today, we heard much about love, about God's love for us, about what it is like to experience God's love, and how to recognize God's love in our midst, what it is, and perhaps more so, what it is not. Lamentations tells us of the attributes of God's love, that it is steadfast, unending, 
merciful and that it is a gift given by our faithful God anew every morning. And for Bob and Hannah, this was a lived experience. Every morning after awakening and greeting one another, they would begin their day together praying morning prayer, basking in God's word, offering prayers for themselves and for others, and ultimately surrendering as best they could their will to God. In God's presence and promises, they found hope. It was a practice that sustained them and a foundation of their marriage. Now, from the time I met Bob, I experienced him to be a man of steadfast and private faith, positive and hopeful, acutely aware of his own humanity, and yet always expressing gratitude for his blessings. One of our parishioners, after visiting Bob late last year at home to bring him communion, said to me, Laurel, you know, when I visited Bob, it was my intention to bring some hope and some joy to him, to encourage him in his difficulties. But it was me who left encouraged. It was me who was gifted by his positive outlook and his kindness. And I think that this was a common experience for many of us, that when we had the joy and the privilege of being in Bob's presence, we came away fed and inspired and renewed. In Psalm 23 are found words that articulate the experience of being loved by God. Like a shepherd, God cares for us and provides for us, comforts and guides us, protects and anoints us, and creates a place where we, with God, may dwell in this present life and in the life beyond. None of us leaves this mortal life without some moments of regret or with sorrow and suffering. And it is often when our beloved dies that we who remain become most aware of what we wish we had done differently or what we wish that we had said. The tenet of our Christian faith is our belief and our hope in life beyond death as given by Jesus' resurrection and his death on the cross. We hold on to God's promise of grace and of love, a love that endures, a love that sustains, a love that has the power to heal our deepest wounds. We need not fear, for love does not lead us, leave us. If we lose ourselves too deeply in our regret or our mourning, we might lose sight of love. God's love for us, God's love for Bob, and especially Bob's love for us that remains and goes on. St. Paul's familiar words shine love into the world and shine light on love so that we may be able to recognize love and name it, and so that we might, in faith and in hope, also be bearers of love into the world. It's not selfish or arrogant. It's not self-serving or rude. It does not demand its own way, and it's not about power over. But rather, love is about healing, it's about the power to heal and transform our hearts and our souls. Love is expressed in kindness, generosity, by forgiving, and in patience, and in truth-telling. It is a balm that heals us, and it's the balm that we most need and desire in our lives. 
Rumi said, a lifetime without love is of no account. Love is the water of life. Drink it down with heart and soul. And Jesus echoes this sentiment. God's love is ours to claim. Steadfast, merciful, unchanging. He promises us it will not disappear. It will not fade away. That love will never ever leave us. And so it is, my friends, with Bob's love for each of you. Your love for him also. May your love and love in general live on in your hearts and souls. And may you, in Bob's memory, be bearers of love into the world. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Almighty God, who has knit together thine elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of thy Son, Christ our Lord, grant, we beseech thee, to thy whole church in paradise and on earth, thy light and thy peace. Amen. Amen. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life and that through the grave and gate of death we may pass with him to our joyful resurrection. Amen. Amen. Grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith that thy Holy Spirit may lead us in holiness and righteousness all of our days. Amen. Amen. Grant to thy faithful people pardon and peace that we may, may be cleansed from all our sins and serve thee with a quiet mind. Amen. Amen. Grant to all who mourn a sure confidence in thy fatherly care, that casting all their grief on thee, they may know the consolation of thy love. Amen. Amen. Give courage and faith to those who are bereaved, that they may have strength to meet the days ahead in the comfort of a reasonable and holy hope, in the joyful expectation of eternal life, with those they love. Amen. Amen. Help us, we pray, in the midst of things we do not understand, to believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Grant us grace to entrust Robert to thy never-failing love. Receive him into the arms of thy mercy, and remember him according to the favor which thou bearest unto thy people. Amen. Amen. Grant that, increasing in knowledge and love of thee, he may go from strength, and strength, strength to strength in the life of perfect service in thy heavenly kingdom. Amen. Grant us, with all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, to have our consummation and bliss in thy eternal and everlasting glory, 
and with all thy saints to receive the crown of life which thou dost promise to all who share in the victory of thy Son, Jesus Christ, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. you. Greet one another with a sign of peace. Be seated. You're welcome. Thank you. Go ahead and take a seat. Good morning. We are so grateful for your presence here today. So thank you on behalf of the family. Thank you for being here, for coming to share your love of Bob with us. We hope that you will stick around and join us in the parish hall after the service for a reception and a time of chat and getting to be with the family. And I want you to know that all are welcome at our table. And so if you would like to come forward for communion, please do. If you would like to receive wine, you may take it by cup and drinking it. We're not intincting presently. If you do not wish to receive wine and just want to receive bread, you can cross your arms across your chest and you will receive the blessing of the cup. If you would like to not partake in the sacraments but would like to receive a blessing, please come forward and you will receive a blessing and just cross your arms across your chest and you will be blessed. And if you would like to remain in your seat and just hold prayerful space, please do that as well. But know that all are welcome at the table. And now... Let us give to God with gladness and generosity the offerings of our lives, our labor, and our love.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who rose victorious from the dead and doth comfort us with blessed hope of everlasting life. For to thy faithful people, O Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when our mortal body doth lie in death, there is prepared for us a dwelling place eternal in the heavens. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying. All glory be to thee, O Lord, our God, for that thou didst create heaven and earth and didst make us in thine own image and of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there a full and perfect sacrifice for the whole world and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we, thy people, do celebrate and make with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial of thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again with power and great glory. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and with thy word and Holy Spirit, to bless and to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be unto us the body and the blood of thy dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, whereby we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and our bodies. Grant, we beseech thee, that all who partake of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and be filled 
with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and also that we and all thy world and thy whole church may be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us be the peace. Alleluia. This is the table of the Lord. It is made ready for those who love him and for those who want to love him more. So come, you who have much faith and you who have little, you who have been here often and you who have not been here long, you who have tried to follow and you who have failed, come. It is his will that those who desire him will meet him here.
Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank thee that in thy great love thou hast fed us with spiritual food and drink of the body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and hast given us a foretaste of thy heavenly banquet. Grant that this sacrament may be unto us a comfort in affliction and a pledge of our inheritance in that kingdom where there is no death, neither sorrow nor crying, but the fullness of joy with all thy saints, through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Give rest, O Christ, to thy servant Robert with thy saints. Thou only art immortal, the creator and maker of mankind, and we are mortal, formed of the earth, and unto earth we shall return. For so thou didst ordain when thou createst me, saying, Dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. All we go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Into thy hands, O merciful Savior, we commend thy servant Robert. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech thee, a sheep of thine own fold, a lamb of thine own flock, a sinner of thine own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of thy mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of thy saints. Amen. Amen. And together join me. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God, and his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.